This is Hunter Henry, tied in for the Los Angeles Chargers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in. Just me and my favorite people. And Jason and Mike. Oh, man. Welcome into the show, the fantasy footballers. Back Set with us you. Set to knock us down. Yeah, but I've got the affection of the two producers now, and that's important. Oh, man. I thought you were talking about the Foot Clan, the listeners. But now you're body bagging them. They're what? They're fifth place. <laughs> Great job, host. Well, they're not physically present with us, are they? Yes, they are. Well, wh- when they are listening, which is the only reason we record the show. Okay, they are physically present. We should now. This is. I mean, our studio is. It's nice sized. I guess we have some height to it. Uh, are we? Well, a live we should, studio. Audience? I'm just thinking a live studio audience. But what is it? What is we would an have, audience plural? Like we have room for one. Yeah. Well, we could fit more if like if we uh, worked out some harnesses and like lifted sus- them up suspended above. Suspended people. I think people would pay for that. Well, they'd pay for the ride. I don't know if they'd want to <laughs> watch the show. <laughs> and then we have a whole new business. Oh, there you go. Tuesday, February 11th. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, it's the the live studio audience. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody oh, calm down. Man. And it's actually February 9th. Don't know why I typed 11th. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. What you, do, what you know for sure, Brooks, is I'm going to read the date. That's the one thing you know for sure. And yep. I'm not going to vet the date because I'm too busy dealing with the studio audience. Now, man. have you been to – you've you've done some of the – like I, I did, went to Fallon. I, I saw Fallon live. I've never seen a live talk show. No? I've, I've toured studios But and you've things. been to like uh, Price is Right. No. No? No, I auditioned for Family Feud. Oh, that's what it was. And I was accepted to be on the Family Feud and got the card in the mail that says, hey, we're going to be calling you soon. And then the host quit and everything went went in the garbage. And I was never on because I was about to You ever seen any show live, Jason? Any of the the late night shows or anything? Um, No. I mean, I was a theater major. (laughs) So I've been in live shows. I I don't audience. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Mike gets it. (laughs) All right. Uh, The Super Bowl Uh, took place yesterday. It did. It was uh, a butt whooping. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I I see a graphic of three Zs, like a snooze fest for uh, Super Bowl 55. 55! Was it a snooze fest, Brooks? After the first half or so, I mean. I didn't find it to be the best game. I guess from what we were ex- expecting from the Chiefs' offense. So we went from just something. real happy to have a full season and the playoffs in a Super Bowl to like not boring. good enough. Well, we're, we're all yeah. you need to judge the Super Bowl. It it is watched is the most watched television event of the year, and it must be judged appropriately. I, I look. I thought the Super Bowl and they was. Sucked. I thought the Super Bowl was borderline awesome, and I think it's it's a matter of perspective, right? Because okay. if if you are really, really, really um, wanting, you know, high scoring, and you're wanting Pat Mahomes, and you're wanting the offense uh, to be great, which uh, you know, that's uh, that's Everybody where I usually that. live. Yeah, that's everybody. what we're all wanting. Then I then I see how you know it's a little bit of the boring. But I saw the game as so more. So if you it, so it didn't have the thing that everybody wanted the game to have. So you can understand why people thought the game was boring. Well, I also wanted that. But my point is, if that was all you cared about. Now, I care about that. But I actually enjoyed watching the whooping that the defensive line was handing out to the backups of the Kansas City Chiefs. I in, like It wasn't like this low-scoring, uh, you know, run-the-ball defensive. It was just like... They're crushing them. They you, are making Pat Mahomes run backwards the second he gets the ball. And I, you know, I I love Mahomes. I love the Chiefs. I, you know, I wanted a high scoring game, but I actually enjoyed just watching a complete domination. Well, I think that for me, the uh, the legacy aspect for Brady 
transcended the lack of competitiveness in the game. The fact that you were just seeing history. Like, people needed to appreciate what they had the chance to watch last night. A young superstar in Mahomes. Running for his life, that part stunk. Not having the O-line, getting the competitive game, that stunk. His receivers getting hit in the hands. And, and the face. and Or the oh. face because their hands didn't, didn't collapse on the ball. But, you know... It, but seeing Brady do what he did and reach, you know, this another level that you just you just kind of shake your head and all. He's forty three years old. He looked uh, incredible. Yeah, I mean the first James half. Jameis Winston couldn't have done that. No, the first half when Brady had to throw, he was he was electric. Three touchdowns, eighty percent completion rate. Went short, went long. It, he he was he was outstanding and. Um, I, I think I've finally come to terms with the fact that he's a decent quarterback. Mm. It's, uh, Hearing good things. So, yeah, it's, I, I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna no, Phillip rivers, but, be, oh goodness, <laughs> but no, I, I, I enjoyed watching history. Like Andy said, the, the fact that the narrative where you have a quarterback at 43 changing teams, no bill Belichick, he can't do it without uncle Billy to a team that didn't make the playoffs last year in a pandemic has to beat in consecutive order Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes. At some point you got to give the man his due. Yeah, it was it was incredible. And uh, I believe there were some pretty heavy Tampa Bay bets. I think the biggest bet in Vegas was like 3.24 million oh, the, on the, Tampa Bay. Yeah, mattress dude. In, yeah, in to Texas. win to win 2.24 or something of that nature. Uh it was also Beyond the Super Bowl, uh, the day that we were able to celebrate the release of the oh. 2021 Ultimate Draft Kit and the UDK Plus, which is brand new for this year, you get instant access. Oh, great. Yeah. The, oh, audience, the audience that loves it. <laughs> Can you put, like, a cap on that button there, uh, Al Borland? Uh, but the UDK Plus yesterday, the Dynasty Pass, instant access to that. You can check it all out at ultimatedraftkit.com. The response has been very positive, which we love to see. We're making improvements to it. Uh, I can tell you right now, uh, college player profiles are coming to the Dynasty Pass. Mm -hmm. So be on the lookout. Yeah. And just, just to emphasize that point again, you're getting the lowest possible price of the UDK, and you would get into the Dynasty Pass, which is up right now. You could go get into content for yes. Dynasty players. Yeah, and you also get entered to win a Listener League spot, which you is do. kind of a big deal. And so if you pre-order before March 1st, you get a shot at that Listener League spot and some other bonuses at ultimatedraftkit.com. They are yeah. loving it, guys. Oh, we want to hear thank you, people. We love you, Foot Clan. I don't know how to make it stop. Yeah. I don't have control anymore. Can't stop on something. I don't have control. If you could get me like like a ooh, you know, like when they when uh, when characters used to smooch in '80s sitcoms, mm -hmm. you'd put that in there. Yeah, I don't, just give Ow. me a just give me a full sitcom. I want a laugh track. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just. nobody wants this, and I need them. I need their buttons on a power strip near me <laughs> so that I can flip that breaker. You know what I mean? Just I'll, for emergencies. I'll work on that. Okay. All right. We talked about Super Bowl Fifty Five. <laughs> I guess uh, some player highlights there. Really need to see Gronk have a big game. Yeah. And then playoff Lenny. Uh, Leonard Fournette ran well. He, he played himself into a contract. He's he going to be a starting running back next year. And depending on where he goes, he could be relevant for fantasy, which is something that – Tampa Bay has said they want him back. When he was cut from the last place Jaguars this year, you did not think you had any asset left in uh, in your dynasty league. We do have the tight end truth episode today. We'll get into that momentarily. Some brief NFL news and notes. I mean, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but the 2021 fantasy season has just begun. It has. And so uh, the Vikings, they hired Clint Kubiak as their offensive coordinator. Coobs. New, new Coobs. Yeah. This is great. Not I love, old Coobs. I love, no. what they, I love what they said. They, they literally want the Kubiak system to stay. Like, they know what, this. Uh, excuse me, Clint. What do you have to offer us? Um, they they know how valuable the Kubiak system oh, is. Oh, noobs. For running. Yeah, that's noobs. true. Noobs. No, but a noob is something else. No, a noob yeah. is a new person. A noob. Yeah, I, but noob but it's, it's an insult. It's, not necessarily. 
Well, if you have you ever called someone a noob or a noob? No, I've never meant it in a good way. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Oh, man, he's so great at it, and he's brand new. Let's check out this new. That was Al Borland. That's not me. He said that. Yeah. Uh, but, Jason, you were worried about Kubiak and the Kubiak system leaving. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it matters. Uh, Kubiak has had a great running system wherever he's been his entire career, including Miami or, or uh, Minnesota, when you go, oh, they don't have the best offensive line. It worked. And so I, I do like – look, I don't know if Clint Kubiak – has more than the name, but I do love that. I mean, he's he's come up in that system, so I would imagine he knows how to continue running it, and it it just shows the commitment to what we saw this past season going forward. They they don't, they're not trying to change their offense; they want their offense to stay what it was. So I I do like um, this hire. Yeah, it's great news for Dalvin Cook managers. Adam Schefter reporting the Eagles are expected to trade Carson Wentz in the coming days. <sighs> oh, oh man. Chicago on standby. Chicago, if you're listening to the Bushes, Chicago is the number one contender right now. Indianapolis. But in, in hilarity, he would go to Chicago, who just traded for Nick Foles this past offseason, and then would be sending Nick Foles back to Philadelphia, although I'm not sure how that works because Nick Foles also has a really gross and bloated contract that would Philadelphia actually want that? Or or do we get, do we get the chaos of Carson Wentz and Nick Foles back together again competing for a starting job? Impossible. You can't have that narrative there. You can't. I, I need to speak. I mean, we existence. need it. We need it on the show, it but would be no. Incredible. Oh. I mean, Foles is. You a imagine hero that in first Philly. knock on the door. Carson Wentz <laughs> arrives. He's in the training room. Oh, hey. It's me. And and by all accounts like you don't you don't hear bad things about Nick Foles character or his personality. Like he sounds like he's so a everybody loves Nick. Everybody he sounds like him. he's a good dude. And a lot of people don't like Carson Wentz. <laughs> Just He would lose the locker room the next day. It'd be a nightmare. So we'll see. I mean tons of quarterbacks potentially uh changing teams. Ian Rappaport is saying the Texans are standing firm on the fact that they don't want to trade Deshaun Watson. People have not offered the three first rounders yet. Is that that's what that says to me? I mean, look if you're if you're the Texans, the best thing you can do is find some way to keep him. Yes, I mean, one there's just nothing. Percent. The reason that rumors of three, four first rounders and three, four second rounders, that's because that's what he's worth, and you you'd be losing somebody worth that many picks and set your team back forever. And yeah. it's really up to Deshaun Watson. It, yes. It's a matter of how. How much hardball is he willing to play? Is he willing to sit out? Is he willing to say, no, like, you will trade me or you will not have a quarterback playing for you this year? Take it to the limit. We're going to find out. All right. A reminder, off-season coaching changes episode coming in mid-March. We'll recap uh, all of the offensive coordinator, head coaching changes, what their impact could be for fantasy purposes and for your players, and we'll break down the schemes and all of that. So, Stay tuned for that. We are with you year round, twice a week right now, three times a week if you are supporting us at jointhefoot.com. We also have the Spitballers podcast on Mondays that you can check out, a comedy show, uh, which, oh, great. Oh, gosh. They're loving it. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, yeah, so that's that's coming up. We've got a rookie review show coming up, some mailbag episodes, a lot of good stuff. It's going to be fun. Um uh, Jason played some pickleball earlier today, and he is a little bit gassed. I did a little movement, and <laughs> a, I'm getting a lot of soreness. You do have to clarify, though, because pickleball, it, if you don't know about pickleball and you just know a little bit, you know it's a, it's a sport for old folk. The, the elderly. Old folk compatible. The uh, the retired folk. But there are you can play pickleball. As a young buck yeah. and out there, we basically play like we're playing tennis. You can be a young buck and play like an old folk. You can do that, too. I am proof. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, you could be a young buck and move like an elderly fella. So, Jason, just so you know, Jason's recovering from <laughs> this morning. And you said you're very sore. That means you did some good work. That, But that's the, that's the embarrassing part is <laughs> I am sore. But you don't remember. But I didn't do much, so... Uh, the exercise thing, it's, uh, it's, it's 2021. New again. Yeah. 20 is new again. 
<laughs> New to me. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to have to get out there with you guys. Mike needs to be humbled. He's, he's just taking over the court. Impossible. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! All right, our final truth episode of the season. That's right, Brooks. The final one? Yes, sir. Okay, the truth of the tight end position in 2020. We finally know everything. We Yeah, we've been trying to understand the tight end position mm-hmm. for a while. And now, completed. Yep. Done. Uh, great games. This is what we classify a great game as 15 or more fantasy points as we look at player consistency. 10 or more fantasy points is a good game. Seven or fewer is a bust game. And we're walking through all of the uh, tight ends that finished. We'll probably get through the top 10 or so. And then if there's other players you guys want to talk about, you can bring them up. So if you are keeping track at home, that means you catch one touchdown for 10 yards and you have not had a bust. Yeah, I guess that's true. And because that's really what you're hoping for from your tight end. We set the bar where they set it, which is <laughs> low. Uh, the truth about tight ends as a whole is that for the, uh, let me check my math, 14th year in a row, we have thought there is a good list of candidates that could break out. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe this year is different, and the tight end position is a little bit more deep, and it was wrong. Oh, for, I can't wait to do it again. I can't wait for next but year. It's my favorite part of every year. <laughs> yeah, but this year, it, it'll be even better because we'll be optimistic about the list of potential breakouts, and we will be hyping up a rookie tight end, Mr. Kyle Pitts. Uh, it, it will say, is this the year that a rookie tight end – can do it. Oh as man, well. what if he stinks? I, oh, is that an armpit joke? It was. It was an attempt at one. <laughs> I didn't get you know, it. Stink, but, stinky pits. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Once it was explained, you know, that it was an armpit joke. I was, I was there. You were all the way there. I was all you the didn't way have there. To make any leaps. Here's the thing. I will, I will say this from experience. We, we've done the show for a long time. Played fantasy for a long time. When you do hit on the someone outside the top ten projected oh, tight ends, man, and they're a home run. That is maybe – that's a top five type of moment for your fantasy team. When you hit on the player, uh, Julius Thomas, the year that Peyton Manning came to Denver. The walrus, George Kittle, man. the walrus. We've, I was Mark say, Andrews. We've had a good run over the last couple of years of, of picking that, even all the way back to Zach Ertz, uh, right. his breakout, uh, the walrus, and um, Mark Andrews. So – We'll, we'll we'll tell you exactly who it's going to be. So maybe we'll talk about some outside the top 10 players that we like going into next year on today's show and then regression candidates because there are some numbers that jump out mm-hmm. at the tight end position that make you go, wow, that's not a lot of receptions for a lot of production and that type of thing. So Travis Kelsey comes in at number one. It's not complicated. 87% good game, 7% bust, 67% great. Oh, ho-hum. What, fifth straight year at the number one position for the tight end? I mean, that's... That's unbelievable. Yes, he is. He has been an advantage. The, the second the, best t- tight end fantasy season of all time, by the way. Wow. Yeah. Okay. One hundred and five receptions, fourteen hundred and sixteen yards, and eleven touchdowns. The really the only questions because the truth is Travis Kelsey is Zeus. He's the best pass catching tight end in the game right now, and he is in the perfect offensive system with a quarterback quarterback that likes to supply him with targets. The only question for Travis Kelsey is what do you believe the truth is next year? Will he hold up and will he continue? And not that. He won't give you the second best tight end season of all time every single year. But does he hold up? Because if he does, then he is absolutely worth a late first round pick or an early second round pick. And we're back at this stage where we were playing this game with uh, Rob Gronkowski and Jimmy Graham a few years ago. Yeah, I mean, the reality is when when you have a player finish five years in a row as the number one at the position, at a position that is very difficult if you don't get one of those top three guys uh, to stream, to find the weekly starts, to have any kind of positional advantage, um, yeah, if, if he plays 16 games next year, he is worth a first-round pick, and I will happily select him. It, it takes, 208 was where he was drafted last year. Th- there's There's – more to it as well not only do you get the positional advantage all of that but you actually get extra bench spots you get more roster flexibility when you're not having to play the waiver wire game 
uh, and and spending fab and spending waiver priorities and making all those decisions. It really allows you to look elsewhere in your roster. But of course, the it won't last forever. He'll be 32 years old next year. As of right now, I'm 100% in on him being the number one tight end next year. There's just nothing we've seen on the field. You know, Super Bowl was yesterday. He had 10 catches for 130 yards or something. It was the quietest, greatest game of all time. Yeah, I mean, if you're betting Kelsey or the field to finish number one next year, my money's on Kelsey again. Yeah, yeah I think that's that's a smart bet. So no no huge information there. Uh, Travis Kelsey, the number one again. <laughs> uh, draft him as the number one tight end and uh, could be good for you for fantasy, as always. Uh, before we get to number two, we want to thank today's sponsors, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is uh, often in my belly, and it's always in my heart. Uh, HelloFresh, you get pre-measured fresh ingredients, mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. You know those stupid grocery trips? I don't because I don't go <laughs> because I don't want to shop around and have to go there. Just have it brought right to your door uh you know I, I love this my wife and i sometimes the kids we get around we cook there's meals for everyone we've got a family we get the family meal plan and it's food that the whole family likes it's 46 percent cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store plus you skip those dumb checkout lines i mean it's it's just a wonderful service to where you get a couple meals sent to you easy to produce the pictures are on the recipe cards and it makes you a better cook. Like, I've started, you know, I'm... Yeah, I'm a, chef is the word you well, use. Well, no, I know okay. I'm a chef. I know I'm a chef. But I'm just saying, I've started even going a little bit off of the... the oh, off book. Oh. Like, I'll, I'll see this and I'll... You're, I'll, you're I'm improvising. I'm, improv I'm, like, tweaking here. I'm a little bit more of this there. What are you, ratatouille? That's, that's he right. He puts the salt on before the basil, not the other way around. <laughs> but I can honestly say I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel conf confident to do that if it wasn't for, you know, years of HelloFresh. So go to HelloFresh.com slash... 10 footballers and use the code 10 footballers for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Once again, it's hellofresh.com slash 10 footballers. And the code is 10 footballers for 10 free meals and free shipping foot clan. We want to thank IP vanish for sponsoring the show. It is try time to take your electronic safety to a another level. You need to be paying attention to this IP vanish. It is a virtual private network. That's a VPN for short. It is a very important tool. It helps you br uh, safely browse the internet. You can use a VPN on your computer, tablet, your phone. I don't know if you guys know this, but pretty much everything we do now is connected to the internet. And if you are not protecting yourself- Never heard of it. <laughs> the internet? Yeah. New, what, new invention. What is this? If you're not protecting yourself on the internet with a VPN, that means that people can- uh, they're, they're peeking at what you are doing and IP Vanish. It's very cheap, $3.49 or just under $28 a year, and you can protect yourself. You get an anonymous IP address. That means your personal IP address is not being tracked. Uh, you can circumvent any online censorship because they have servers all over. There's 1,500 servers in 70 locations. If you're on public Wi-Fi, everyone knows what you're doing. Go to ipvanish.com slash footballers to claim your 65% savings. They have plans starting at just $349 a month or $27.99 a year. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotional offering. You can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish, the best of the best, rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot with more than 6,000 reviews. Go check it out. It's ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. All right, number two at the tight end position, number two in consistency, Darren Waller. You want to hit that drop? Yeah! <laughs> so let's look at the truth of Darren Waller. 69% uh, good games, 31% great, 25% bust. All, all the while, 100, 107 receptions again this year, 1,100 yards, nine touchdowns. On a team that had an offense that was far less consistent than Darren Waller was, and that this offense tried to do a full reboot over the – I mean, they spent their first-round pick on a wide receiver. They spent a third-round pick on a wide receiver. I I was personally concerned with Darren Waller because he was, he was a volume stud last year, and I wasn't sure that that would sustain over, uh, over the next season. And holy crap, Darren Waller is excellent, and he, he just proved that – the targets have to go his way. I think we all worried a little bit about the volume 
and what was coming I, in this I year. I definitely did. And it seems like what happened was Darren Waller has now established himself as potentially a tier above Mark Andrews because uh, volume, I mean, that okay. goes a long yep. way. He still has a touchdown threat, nine touchdowns. He was, uh, according to ESPN, the most commonly rostered tight end among champions this year. And uh, per Peter Chung, our writer, if you only counted weeks 7 through 17, he still would have finished at number two, cool. which tells me that there was a separation there between him and Mark Andrews this year in particular, or even you know Robert Tunyon, where is Waller locked and loaded as the number two next year? I don't think he is locked and loaded as the number two. Uh, the 145 targets is why he was so great this year. Mm -hmm. The question is going to be, what do the Raiders do in the offseason? Mike brought up they really tried to revamp their wide receiver core. It, it, it didn't work. I mean, uh, their their two rookies were huge disappointments for them this year. Their big acquisition, their number one wide receiver became Nelson Aguilar. Like, uh, yeah, 145 targets are going to Waller, and that's not to take anything away from Waller. The talent is there. He's He demanded those targets, and he could get them again. But should the Las Vegas Raiders go out and sign Allen Robinson, Allen Robinson is going to demand 145 targets. You know, he's going to come in and get that. And I think that will have a negative effect. Whereas you've got George Kittle, you've got Mark Andrews um, that are in the conversation. Maybe TJ Hawkinson. Well, uh, you know, it'll. he is definitely in the second tier of tight ends behind Kelsey. But I, I think that it will not just be him there. Well, it'll be interesting because, you know, Mark Andrews is on a team with the same situation at wide receiver, really, that – uh, Darren Waller was dealing with, and both of those teams could be destinations for Robinson or Galladay or one of those players. Mm -hmm. um, I think the volume you know, is locked in for Waller. I, it, I, he will be even if Allen Robinson comes in. I think you'll see the the Jason special of what there, should there'll be. be there'll be two targets on that team, and it, Darren Waller will be the other one. That should that if they don't do that, it's stupid. Agreed. So. He he moves the offense. Let all tight ends and red zone targets, tar teams target share, reception share. Uh, but it will be interesting to see who goes where in the big wide receiver roulette in the offseason. Uh, it was nice to see the touchdowns uh, show up. The, 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 the one stat I, I was, was focused on last offseason with Darren Waller was that he was essentially like – Players who had seen the volume that he saw last year, you know, over 1,100 yards, they all score an average of seven plus touchdowns. His three last year was just absolutely outrageous. So it was just another win for positive pay, regression like, for yes. math. Yeah, for math. Yeah, like just the, the numbers, the, those other numbers say that the touchdown number was an outlier and won't stay that low. All right, I've got some numbers for you to highlight the truth about how much better Waller and Kelsey really were than the rest of the tight ends Waller scored 74 fantasy points more than the tight end three Robert Tunyon the gap between Tunyon and the tight end 20 was only 51 points yeah so this is why Waller was on so many championship, championship rosters because, because, because you, of the he, doubts well, the he didn't round. cost you exactly he didn't cost you what Travis Kelsey did but he was still one of really only two difference makers because we talk about uh, Andrews is good or Kittle is good but those guys were injured and and had bad games so there were really only two you know someone has to be the tight end three in consistency but there were only two consistent tight ends period yeah yeah and then there's the maybe the Injury caveat that can be discussed about George Kittle and his season and, mm -hmm. you know, what he gave you when he did play. But you're right. And you won championships with him, which adds to the point of Kelsey going higher if you think he can give you a number one season again. Locked and loaded guaranteed production. Robert Tunyon was three. His consistency was sixth. Uh, the second half was far more consistent than the first half, at least in terms of, you know, not doing the tight end dance of okay, a couple good games, a couple bad games. Yeah, the the the, the fascinating thing for Robert Tunyon, we talked about Kelsey, 145 targets, the Walrus, 145 targets, Robert Tunyon, 59, 59 targets, but 500, 586 yards and 11 touchdowns. He was interesting because it it felt like Robert Tunyon was not part of the plan. For the Green Bay Packers to start the uh, season. To, to start the season, I mean, they had uh, uh, 
They had just spent a draft pick on Jay Sternberger. I know eh, there was some of that uh, dynasty hope and hype for Sternberger. Yeah, but Robert Tunyon was the guy who came through and just established that, no, I am great. I, I, I work with this offense. You need to get me involved. And that's really what happened. You see, like, from week eight on, he was a difference-making tight end. He feels like the biggest trap to me. Could be. Well, he's not even under contract yet. Well, there you go. But 11 touchdowns on 52 catches. What does Green Bay do at the wide receiver position? They dealt with right. injuries with Alan Lazard all year long. Um, he would be the one that like doesn't fit the profile of draft value to me because I imagine he will go higher than I would want to take him. Yeah, I mean, this isn't a volume receiver, and we are going to talk a lot about the regression that is clearly coming. For Aaron Rodgers, when you throw 48 touchdowns and 9.1% of your passes are a touchdown, that will inevitably come down. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, in his long-storied, great first ballot Hall of Fame career, has thrown 9% before, and then the following season it came back down. His, you know, that's That's way above his career average of 6%, which is still a good number. So if the touchdowns are coming down, and Tunyon was the touchdown reliant weapon, then he is the first guy up that I think is going to have a, a sure. fantasy fall from grace. I will say it's it's a nice time to just highlight with, when you're scouting with data. Robert Tunyon was great in college. Uh, if you're looking in the dynasty past, this is this isn't a statistic that we made up. This is just this has been out there for a few few years, but it's the dominator statistic, which is what percentage of your team's yards and your team's touchdowns how, what percent were you responsible for? And you take a look at these guys at what they did in college. Tunyon had a 38% dominator rating, which is spectacular. Like that, That's an incredible amount of the production for a college team. And we know that, that uh, there is a correlation between guys with huge dominator percentages going into the pros. So the NFL missed on Robert Tunyon at, at the beginning you know, in the draft process. But it shouldn't be a shock that someone who was so good in college is actually pretty good in the pros. And he's close friends with George Kittle. So well, yeah. he's got to rub off. Which I think is good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, a little dangerous, though, right? Like, I just feel like if you're hanging out with George Kittle, you're living a little bit dangerously. Yeah, he's cutting seen. down trees. He's probably on a quad right now. Like, mm -hmm. right this moment, he's on yeah. a quad. Hey, ain't no helmet on that quad. <laughs> probably not. No way. You got to take the quad to cut the trees down. That's right. Yeah. You cut the trees down with the quad. Oh. Yeah. It's knocking quad trees saw? down. Yeah. I think, yeah. I don't know if that works. All right. TJ Hawkinson at four, consistency rank of eight. Uh, his consistency percentages perfectly highlight every single <clears throat> thing I thought about TJ Hawkinson this year, which is 44% good games, zero great games, 25% busts. Mm -hmm. Very reliable, 101 targets. He was there, and he was willing to catch the football. He did not make spectacular plays that I put my eyeballs on very often, uh, and yet here he is. He was the tight end three from weeks one through 14 and was pretty close to Darren Waller until a collapse at the end, which, you know. That wasn't just Hawkinson. No. That, was a, that was a collapse by the Detroit Lions, and Matthew Stafford had a hand injury, if you, yeah. if you recall, over those final few games. Hawkinson is extremely interesting. I know I knew he was I knew he finished well, but really looking at his consistency chart of he you know the majority of the time or I guess not not majority because you 40 44% good, but he did help your team. And if you're looking at the Detroit Lions who are uh burning it down to rebuild and Marvin Jones doesn't come back and Kenny Galladay does not come back, Hawkinson is pretty interesting to me I have no idea I don't have a gauge right now where his ADP will be but Hawkinson you know in in the ninth round or so if if he does drop to there becomes extremely interesting to yeah, me you, you look that could the, be way too low you, you look at the best tight ends right Travis Kelsey he's one of two targets Darren Waller he's one of one target Mark Andrews is one of two targets and while Hawkinson is with Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay he's you know obviously 
the at least third on the, on the pecking order. If those guys go away and he is one of the primary targets, he'll be much better for fantasy. Yeah, I, I think I would go the other direction with Hawkinson. I mean, Galladay wasn't there all year, essentially. Marvin Jones was, but you lost the quarterback. You have it. You you've spent the year bemoaning what it felt like to have Noah Fant with Drew Locke. Get ready for TJ Hawkinson, a far less oh, Jared, explosive. Jared Goff is way better. Far than, less explosive, far less athletic. Goff is so much better than Drew Locke. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't think that you're going to see an uptick for TJ Hawkinson. He had okay. a he had a he had an opportunity with Matthew Stafford for the majority of the year without Kenny Galladay. That it's being a downgrade to me. That being said, he was a second year tight end, which we know like tight ends don't break out that early. I mean, not all tight ends break out. Also, uh, absolutely. But he was he was drafted as a, he was a you know hopeful pick. star tight end in year two. He took a clear step forward and was very good for a second year tight end. Not what we hoped. Certainly didn't dominate. But now coming into year three, and 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 the I, only thing I disagreed with was your uh, you saying he's going to get better. I don't think it gets better for him in the new scenario. Is my point. Do you think the offense in Detroit is better without no, Matthew Stafford? certainly not. But I, I do think that there is something to a 23-year-old tight end coming into that next year. I mean, usually you've got that year three is around when tight ends I mean, break it's, up. It's the, the balance of that scale of the offense decreasing in potency, but those the targets going up. Like, TJ Hawkinson could be a 130-target guy. There's a lot unknown in the wide receiver course, so I know why that that's a feeling now. I, yeah, d I yeah, doubt he surpasses the target total. This could change in two weeks. He also led all tight ends and drops, which is something we saw in his rookie year and yeah. we saw again in his second year. Uh, you know, hockey leaves versus the hawk strap. It happened frequently pass to pass, but um, we'll see. We'll see what they do at wide receiver. Mark Andrews, consistency rank of three. Finished fifth at the position. Uh, it was a rocky road for the... <laughs> The Baltimore offense and not the general? ice cream kind. No, which I'm a big fan of, for the record. <laughs> Chocolate ice cream is not that good. Wait, Are you what? a Rocky Road fan? Uh, I honestly, I never know, had it. Right? I don't know what's in Rocky Road. Really? Like, Let's take a shot here, Mike. Oh, yeah. Live on the air. Okay. What do you think is in some Rocky Road ice well, cream? Well, I'm going to go with a chocolate ice cream base. <laughs> oh, man. I spoiled that one. All right. Yeah. Which is uh, great, by the way. Chocolate ice cream is You are is a big fantastic. fan. Cause, oh, cause, it's so good. Uh Marshmallows? Yeah, you got uh -huh. it. Yeah. Is there another thing in there? There is another thing in there. I think there is, yeah. yeah. Nuts? Yeah. What, what you, nut? You could really, you could. Ooh. Uh, you could nail it, Mike. Pecans? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's almonds. He said pecans. It's almonds. It's almonds. Dang. But. I, I thought about going cashew, but I didn't feel, yeah. I didn't feel good about that one. <laughs> I would never. Brazil nut? <laughs> I would never Can have I get known a Brazil nut? what nut it was. I just oh, knew really? it was chocolate ice cream. Marshmallows and nuts. Oh, because you don't like it. Well, yeah, because chocolate ice cream base. How remember? Chocolate ice cream is good. Uh, I mean, this feels like uh, I, I can already hear you saying, "Don't hear what I'm not saying." I like all ice cream. What but is the best base then? Vanilla. Vanilla. Yeah. Vanilla. I mean, there's really only two. He's right bases, about that. Usually. But sometimes, I mean, it's like sometimes you got a you get chocolate milkshake or a vanilla milkshake. Uh, well, because chocolate milkshakes are made out of chocolate ice cream, I you of course get vanilla. Think a vanilla milkshake is better than a chocolate. There is a reason that vanilla is an insult. Yes. Because it is so boring and so plain. Well, let's... Okay, all right, hold on. This we're is getting, more important getting, than anything we could be discussing. <laughs> we're getting a little about ice cream. off track from my brand. I don't get a vanilla shake. I mean, sure, if I go to uh, In-N-Out where their options are, would you like vanilla or chocolate? Yeah, okay, vanilla. But I'm getting an Oreo cream cookies a cream milk cake. i'm getting uh, you know you take a strawberry over a chocolate i would take a strawberry over chocolate I'm just, you ever had a strawberry shake don't ask stupid <laughs> questions but you know i'm just saying uh chocolates at the bottom put those three in order chocolate vanilla strawberry chocolate vanilla strawberry okay okay don't get i, I don't do fake strawberry oh uh, well that is true it's a lot of times it's vanilla ice cream with chocolate syrup in the in the shake yeah yeah, because they're like, this vanilla is really vanilla, so let's take it up a notch. Well, it's hard to argue with the base argument, though. Like, it's a base for something. Yeah, yeah. chocolate. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> you, you know what's great? It's, uh, you like cookies and cream? You know what's awesome? Chocolate with Oreos. Fantastic. 
Mm. Sounds worse. I don't know about that one. Dude. All right, Mark Andrews. I, I, as I live and breathe. Rocky road for Mark Andrews to start the year. Three weeks outside the top 30, three weeks inside the top three. 29% great games. Yeah, that's what I look for from the tight end position. Win mm. me a week. Mm -hmm. 50% good games. Okay. 43% bust. Not so good. Uh, Lamar Jackson and the miniature-sized passing pie of Baltimore had a lot to say about Andrews taking the next step. I was hopeful we would see a volume increase. I know we talked about it in the beginning of the year. Instead, you got 88 targets, 58 catches. You saw an opportunity for him to see a volume increase. I mean, his routes increased, his snaps increased on a per-game basis. He did miss uh, a couple of games. What's bizarre about Mark Andrews' season is it was actually fine. It, it was it, If you drafted him – you, I don't think you are very. You, I don't think you should be upset. In the, the the middle of the fourth round, he turns into the tight end five. He missed a couple games, but he won you several weeks. You're at definitely the upset, and the reason you're upset, I don't. I said I don't think you should. Uh, I, be. I, 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 I agree. I won't argue with your feelings in the, in the end. But here's <laughs> what happened. Had a few. <laughs> if you wanted Mark Andrews, you had to pay up for him. Yeah. You had yeah. to draft him earlier than everybody else. You wanted that Travis Kelsey breakout before it happened. Um, you know, that next step forward. And so he cost you a lot. And then those first three weeks, two of those weeks were absolutely irrelevant. I mean, he doesn't score four fantasy points in week two or week three. And you're going, oh no, what have I done? And when when you have to have extreme capital given in the draft, those early games matter so much. And, and that's why I think Mark Andrews is probably going to be a value next year. People got burned, or they felt like they mm -hmm. got burned. And so you're going to have a large chunk of especially the people who believed in Mark Andrews who are going to say, not this time, Satan. I <laughs> <laughs> not today! Uh, I I think... <laughs> I will agree Did with you. Did you just call Mark Andrews Satan? It, it was more of a Ace Ventura <laughs> reference, but it's not. Uh, I agree with you on this one. I think that they will sign a big time wide receiver. Yeah, uh, and I think Andrews will between what he did to your team last year and that receiver and the narrative of the pie. Look, Lamar Jackson loves Mark Andrews. He loves yes. throwing him the football in the red zone, and so I think that there's a lot of upside there. I think Mark Andrews is fine, and you know the. You can look at the beginning of Mark Andrews' season, and you can also go look at Lamar Jackson. It was, it was a bad start. Yeah, L Lamar Jackson played poorly. offensively <laughs> instead of offensively. Yes, he he played very poor for about three quarters of the season. He did find himself. Yeah, yeah, won you a title. I know, I know. No, I, I'm not even saying that. But thank you for bringing that up. It's a <laughs> it's a good time to remind everybody that I am the, a three time champion in the league of record. A lot due to Lamar Jackson finding himself and figuring out the offense and getting Hollywood Brown going, getting Mark Andrews going. So I'm I'm with Mark Andrews for next year. All right, let's get through some more tight ends here. Logan Thomas at six, Mike Gesicki at seven. Logan Thomas actually had a consistency rank of ninth. He was a hidden gem, not drafted by anybody. Um, Once he didn't have Dwayne Haskins throwing him the ball. Yeah, yeah, and and he. What week was that? Was that week six? Oh, I. I, it was a genuine question. Oh, I, I, I don't recall off the top of my head. Okay. I'll look so that up. So he ended up with 72 catches, 670 yards, and six touchdowns. That's what you get at, at tight end six. And uh, consistency ranked, like I said, of ninth. He is... He was Mr. Necessary for Washington. Yes. He, yeah, he's definitely Mr. Necessary. I mean, we'll see what they do at the wide receiver position. I have to imagine they upgrade. The biggest question is what do they do at quarterback because... It still could be Mr. Necessary, Logan, and, uh, Logan Thomas. And like the dude is still learning how to be a tight end. He was a quarterback forever. He's only been a tight end for a couple years. So Haskins started the first three weeks. If you take those okay. three weeks out, Logan Thomas was actually consistency number five. Okay. So And, and okay. he got better as the season went along. He's very interesting to me next year. Mike Gesicki, though, was kind of a disappointment. 53 catches, 700 yards, six touchdowns, 14th in consistency, and that's what really hurt. Had a stretch from week 9 through 14 where he was all right. Uh, quarterback changes played a big part in what was going on in Miami. But you didn't pay a lot in the draft. You were taking your shot that it was going to be a breakout year. Mm -hmm. Really wasn't. Had some spectacular plays. Um you know, tied for the most end zone targets among the tight ends uh, with 12. So, I mean, he could have had a Tunyon-like season if 
He had Aaron Rodgers and not Tua Tungavailoa. I saw a lot of those fades that were awful. Yeah. But if Deshaun Watson came to Miami. Okay. Now we're talking. Now we're getting sticky with (laughs) it. All right. uh, Rob Gronkowski at eight. Consistency rank of 13. I think that that betrays the truth of Rob Gronkowski because now my head, now I'm sick and getting jiggy with it in my head. You're welcome. <laughs> getting sick. Of, all right. Uh, week six through 17 are really where he got it going. Uh, a nice stretch in the middle of the year was better against bottom 16 defenses. And Bruce Arians was willing to, to throw him the ball down the field, which is where Gronk used to make his hay. Uh, most tight end targets, receptions and yards on 20 plus yard attempts. He was a diamond in the rough as well for fantasy teams. He was, but he also had a a uh, opportunity present itself uh, when O.J. Howard went down. He had, he tore his Achilles. Am I remembering that correctly? So that what happens next year? They're they're you know honeymoon phase. They just won the Super Bowl. Brady, I'm coming back. Gronk talking about wanting to come back. Why would you not and try and win another Super Bowl? But if O.J. Howard is ready to go at the beginning of the year, what does that do for the role of, oh, it's, of Gronkowski? It's massive. It's massive. People that drafted Gronk were extremely unhappy. Gronk became a gem in the middle of the season because the first four weeks when O.J. Howard was playing football, Gronk wasn't really involved in the passing game. He was a great run-blocking uh, tight end. Week four is when the injury happened to – uh, you don't. You can't trail it all back to the injury, though. I mean, Gronkowski hadn't played football in two years, and he was joining a brand new true. system with Bruce Arians, and they were figuring out some things in the offense, and it kind of worked out with Gronk at tight end. I don't think it's a. I don't think that you're going to have him disappear off the. You know, he's a favorite target for Tom Brady. Yeah, but th- I, I I agree. OJ Howard might not even be back. Some I mean, of that coming back. Yeah, that's into why the I equation. say if he's back. Uh, I, I agree. Some of it is him getting his legs back and yada yada. But he's a he's a he's a great run blocker and. O.J. Howard was on pace sure. for 76 targets. The, you know, it's one of those things where if he is back, I think O.J. Howard is obviously uh, um, going to siphon away targets from Gronk. Although, you could lose one or two of the wide receivers. So, I mean, this is really a nebulous situation with the Buccaneers. We don't know if Godwin is back. We don't know if Antonio Brown is back. We don't know if O.J. Howard is back. Those things, if everybody's back – no thank you on Gronk if 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 a lot of those or two-thirds of those leave then Gronk should be fine he looked great obviously he just dominated in the Super Bowl well from week six on you're re- or I'm sorry from tight end six seven on you're looking at spot start streamers you're not looking at locked in players anyway so it's just a matter of whether Howard or Gronk or you know uh, Gesicki can give you a week because they weren't able to be consistent on a regular basis Hurst was ninth with a consistency rank of 16. Huge wet fart on his hype. Jonu Smith is a free agent. He finished 10th, consistency of 11th. Jimmy Grandpa finished 11th with a consistency rank of 12th. Noah Fant, I think, is your, you know, yes. jumping out as a breakout candidate because he finished at 12th, consistency of 22nd, dealt with injuries. So it, injuries that he played through. Yeah, but, you're not um, going to see you're not going to see a bunch of missed games. He only missed one, but he was really hampered in the middle of the season. And but they lost Albert O as well, didn't they? Uh, uh later, uh, yes. later. But they also lost their number one wide receiver before the season had even begun. So where do you, how do you feel about Fant? Let's Portland talk about Sutton. him, Mike, because I I get it that he has he has the athletic profile that you're going to take a shot on for someone who could break out, but. I would project that Cortland Sutton will be good to go at the beginning of the year. Jerry Judy in his second year. And uh, Drew Locke, if he's still the quarterback, yeah. then I I will be uh, not taking the shot on Noah Fant. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe Drew Locke can support Noah Fant to be an every-week starter. I think Noah Fant is an every-week fantasy option with, with a solid quarterback. Um, and to answer like your question. Like Jared Goff. Right. Uh, <laughs> Albert O went down, uh, missed, started missing games in week 10. Eric Ebron finished at 15th, consistency of 15th. No juju next year for Pittsburgh. Is Eric Ebron, you know, Vance McDonald retired. Is Eric Ebron interesting in any capacity to kind of, mm. he had a, he had a nice, well, I, I should say more consistent second half of the year after a couple of bad games to start the season. 
he doesn't strike me as someone who's going to turn into a okay weekly re- reliable guy. Uh, someone I want to highlight real quick, um, the because he saw eighty nine targets. He didn't really do anything with the production because he wasn't supposed to be the guy who saw eighty nine targets. I'm talking about Dalton Schultz from the Dallas Cowboys because my man Blake Jarwin went down in week one. He'll be back. He'll be better than ever. The infinite stat lines in Mike's head for for old Blake. Um, the tight end that I would oh, bring, Blake. The, the tight end that I would bring up here um, is someone that we had lots of debate and argument this previous season. Andy and I on one side, Mike on the other. Um, but I think we're going to have more debate this year because oh, yeah. Big Beast, okay. if, if Gerald Everett leaves and is not a part of this team, which they're in not the best cap situation, um, and it, I, I think there's good odds that Tyler Higby is alone. And if that's the case, uh, we've seen him be valuable on the field. Now, Why didn't you just it. lead with the fact he finished at 18 with a consistency rank of 25? That's how you should have opened. Well, right. And but you didn't when, gloat enough. You didn't Jason enough. <laughs> um, but I well, it's weird because I'm kind of making a pro Higby argument. I know, here. which is weird. Well, but it's because <laughs> Everett might be gone. Right. Do, so are you saying that you don't think Tyler Higby could be a valuable fantasy asset if he's the only tight end there? Well, I I think he could be a valuable asset, like he but was he would, four times this year. But there, the problem is he's really good at blocking people. Yeah. That's true. Gerald so, Everett couldn't block anybody. So, you know, I, I just don't know how consistent. I don't think I'm going to be reading those tea leaves with Tyler. Okay. <laughs> it, I mean, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel. No, let's I mean, talk yeah. about George Kittle, though. Yes. Consistency okay. rank of four. That's where, I mean, George Kittle is the player that will be debated as a draft pick ahead of Darren Waller. He's the one player that, despite the year being, you know, injury plagued, is worthy of that consideration. If you, Mike, are you betting on, or I guess you were saying Waller's volumes guarantee, but Jason, you're talking about them bringing in some other pieces. Are you going to go George Kittle's way? I know you like Brandon Ayuk and, and Debo Samuel. I'm sure will be healthy for a game or two. So uh, George Kittle or Darren Waller next year, right here, right now. Oh man, that, that it's an interesting question. The pressure is on. Um, my natural inclination is to go George Kittle because I think he's um, got higher upside but I don't know that that is true. If if they don't bring in another great wide receiver to the Las Vegas Raiders, I might just want to take the consistency and the and the volume and the known commodity versus the giant explosion games that George Kittle can give you. And depending on the the draft value, George Kittle I still think has a has a bigger name, more weight to uh, his abilities and name than than Darren Waller has. I think Kittle will go ahead of Waller. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right, anybody else? Zach Ertz, you want to spend 10, 15 minutes on Ertz, Mike? <laughs> oh, man, he's done. I mean, he's, so are their quarterbacks. I mean, they, they, at least one of them. Yeah. So, so Zach Ertz should go to Chicago with, uh, with Carson So Wentz. then what do you make of Dallas Goddard? Dallas Goddard is a good player. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll wrap up today's Truth episode. want to thank Pristine Auction. Uh, the aforementioned Brandon Ayuk signed jersey currently at $20. Ends on Thursday. Uh, Miles Sanders signed jersey. DK Metcalf signed jersey right now, $20. That's the current auction bid price at pristineauction.com. Those auctions end on Thursday. There are hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Please check them out. And when you do, be kind to your wallet. Use the code BALLERS. You get a $10 credit. Mm -hmm. towards one of those signed uh, pieces of sports memorabilia at pristineauction.com. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye. To this episode of the show. But another one coming up on Thursday. What's what's happening on Thursday, Andy? Uh, Hopefully the studio audience (laughs) is gone. I'll tell you that. (laughs) Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.